И я приглашаю на сцену нашего следующего пленарного докладчика. Это самый известный so в России переводчик древнекитайских текстов, транслятор древнекитайских культур, художник, as well as artist, and musician, каллиграф, каллиграф, актер, режиссер, каллиграфер, актер, директор. Я сказал, что сейчас очень интересная очередная Экранизация романа Пелевина про вампира, где он очень интересно играет. В общем, на сцену приглашается Бронислав Виноградский. Сюда, сюда. So we're going to talk for a while. So uh, my, my topic, the topic of my speech was the Book of Changes as an instrument of evolution of the planetary conscience. It's really very difficult for me to remember the name of the topic which, I go, which I'm going to present, but the topic is really very interesting because it is obvious that really nothing could tell us now that the Book of Changes can play uh, a decisive role in the evolution of planetary consciousness. I'm not really a fan of I'm not really a fan of evolution of planetary consciousness, but we have to admit the obvious. The planetary consciousness uh, is really of evolutionary nature and it leads us to different labyrinths. Uh, it invites us to get lost in our own beliefs and to impose them with all the zeal and pleasure on each other and to get into various conflicts on, on the basis of our beliefs. So uh, many communicating as humans, so to say. I believe that human beings are very moving, movable and uh, ridiculous and very funny, joyful creatures. This is how I define the uh, human mind to myself. And now let's move to the Book of Changes. I enjoy talking about the Book of Changes and it really doesn't matter a lot uh, where or to whom or uh, in what connection to speak about the Book of Changes, whether it's um, connected to the cuisine or to sex. Everybody likes the Book of Changes. Whether, whether I can connect the Book of Changes to Chinese modern politics or uh, about Kazakhstan. So every topic can be connected with the Book of Changes. But the main question remains why it is so brave and courageous that the Book of Changes is the main tool of planetary evolution evolution of planetary consciousness. Well, I would say that it's not about the future. The Book of Changes is already such a tool, and in my life it's uh, the same. My life is an evidence of this, of this statement. So once there were some Chinese, they were talking loudly, and they were covering themselves with their clothing and they pretended to be totally European people, but, but we, Russians, sometimes we also pretend to look like and to be European, though it's much easier for us than for Chinese people, uh, due to a long tradition of Orthodox Church. And, uh, but for Chinese people, it's more difficult to, pre to pretend to be uh, European because for a very long time, uh, Chinese consciousness was the product of uh, its own Chinese paradigm. 
So, uh, in trying to tell the world what the Chinese cultural paradigm is, uh, the Chinese people get, well, get trapped into this formula which I mentioned above, uh, the formula about people being uh, touching and joyful and ridiculous, because when you see Chinese people explaining their concepts, their paradigms, paradigms you may uh, well, misunderstand, well, because they seem to be touching, moving, and so forth. Chinese people live in a different time. When a Chinese professor gives a lecture about a, a preschool education and is telling about Chinese history, he tells his students, please remember that in Chinese history the main thing is uh, the 841 year before Christ. Why? Because in Chinese his history since that time, since 841 year before Christ, they have uh, a very definite and precise chronology, very definite records, precise about different historical events. I've just recently come across one lecture of one Chinese professor from, Zhang, from a Chinese university. Zhang Ban Wei, and he was uh, responding to Western journalists on their question, if, and the question was if the rule of Chinese Communist Party is legitimate, and the question was whether they uh, took this legitimacy themselves or the uh, people gave them this legitimacy. Because, you know, Abrahamic paradigm, uh, a Western paradigm, is of course kind or uh, good, but it so overwhelms the Western mind that it leaves place to nothing more and nothing else and uh, it makes people who share this Abrahamic paradigm be rejecting and be very limited and be unable to accept something different. And so this question of this journalist oh, was about, about from Abrahamic paradigm. And if we take the Chinese history and its chronology, why do I address this? Because when I speak about the Book of Changes, I speak about the very basis, about the very, uh, the very basic principles of Chinese culture. So I think about it because I, because Abrahamic paradigm, Western paradigm, what is the main difference between this paradigm and Chinese paradigm? Well, Abrahamic paradigm is uh, eschatologic, and in other words, the whole modern cognitive experience or perception uh, is that in the end we all wait for the doomsday. The doomsday is waiting for all of us, according to this concept. Uh, this is uh, the basis of many Judaistic, uh, Judaistic cults and Christian cults. And the same is about with the science, because they say that there was the primary explosion, Big Bang, which uh, started the beginning, and so then the development went on. But when you come across the Chinese uh, perception of evolution and of the beginning, uh, you start to understand that if there was anything that was uh, developing, it's not about a human being. Because when you look at the uh, Yellow Emperor's book or Book of Changes, you understand that the knowledge which uh, people had in the ancient times, this knowledge was much more into integral, wholesome, and they 
enabled people to sell different tasks with uh, less losses and difficulties. So, and when we come across this old books and referring to the previous speaker who was telling about in one of his films who, who gave us some knowledge about some islands and people who came to the islands and started fighting about these islands, young boys in conflicts with each other, killing for the islands. That was the end of the happiness. So all these wise stories about the evolution, about the uh, communal, communal way of organizing the society, and just we can look at this from a different perspective, not from an Abrahamic perspective. We can understand that it's just bullshit. That's a question of a personal power. Who is the first one to come into power? Well, uh, is the first one to be the leader in this situation? So. And I think that is the way the things are going. So the Abrahamic concept means that the end of the world, the doomsday, is inevitable. Maybe, well, Hollywood sometimes tells us uh, fairy tales how you can escape the doomsday. Uh, in a very emotional and powerful way. Everybody has uh, this uh, special devices, special gadgets in our pockets. Everything is already uh, pre-planned for us. We are told how should we grasp the values, how should we grasp the concepts, and how, what sequence should we give to these concepts. Uh, we are already given all these things. We need not to know anything else, we just are being told how should we think. Everywhere we have some tips, some pins, how to think. So, uh, as it comes, if there is the end of the world, the doomsdays, then it means that there is no time. That is why the Western paradigm, the Western concept, uh, excludes the notion of time. And we live in such context where uh, we say that we live in 2018, year after the birth of Jesus Christ. For me, this is just another story which is, uh, which is being implemented by different people to control and to manage the mind, the consciousness of others, uh, to play with the moral and ethical values uh, no more, no less, no better, no worse, just as it is. When I very often uh, address the, the different pieces of music, we should just say you have uh, great notes, great tunes, but uh, why do you perform it so badly? If we have great notes and great instruments, it doesn't mean that uh, we necessarily play well. We just need to be playing well to play the notes. And if I play the music, it doesn't mean that I compose music. And what can I compose if there are only seven notes in the world? So in other words, there are not so many basic elements in the world. And I have to mention that we have, if, we, if we admit that there is the notion of uh, tangible time, which must definitely and that's not my way. It's not the story I share. According to the Book of Changes, now we are uh, in a very long cycle, one of, one of the cycles. It, uh, it comprises of 21 million and 600 years. Now we are in the year 10 million. 155,935 35th year in this cycle. So, uh, 
we are in this cycle, a very long one, and that's uh, like a round sphere, and this sphere is in another sphere, and this sphere in different spheres. And there were such techniques, such stories uh, that Book of Changes gives us uh, that you will never find in Abrahamic tradition. Of course, you can give brilliant, absurd, paradoxical answers and responses to a totally wrong questions, to the questions put in a totally wrong way. So now I'm telling you that on a planet, now there are three basic semantic matrices, which, which are the place where this uh, phenomenon, which we call consciousness, reside, and, and uh, in each small sphere, uh, this consciousness builds its little house until uh, some other things invade it and uh, starts dividing. If uh, to this semantic matrix is where we can find also Abrahamic concepts, we could add uh, Vedas, uh, Indian matrices, that makes it even more complicated. But now I'm talking about the Book of Changes. Why do I adore it so much? Not just because I like it so much, but because I see that the changes around us, uh, that this, this book can also be a tool of divination, a tool of prediction. And as I observe the things around me, I understand that inevitably uh, this, this cognitive paradigm, uh, which is connected with the Book of Changes, is uh, our future and is already coming on. Uh, so those people who are uh, doing some facilitation, who are helping some creation, some child, some new project to be born, who are doing facilitation, they really could get a great use of the Book of Changes. The Book of Changes uh, is a sacred text to the Chinese tradition, which was the longest one, never interrupted, never impeded. Uh, and this civilization, Chinese civilization, was, uh, uh, was here for more than 5,000 years. That's the longest time in the human history. So, all these things that I'm showing you now, this is 7,000 years, it's Chinese. This thing is 4,000 years old, it's Chinese. So that's the longest culture, longest social structure. So, this, is, uh, this culture was never interrupted. And this we say that we address to the semantic level, because this meaning that it was interrupt wasn't interrupted. Uh, this is the power of the semantic field, because we know that the knowledge is not being transferred by the signs only. But if we speak about the signs, they have hieroglyphs in China. And we know that the Book of Changes was written in hieroglyphs, and it was the main, the main text of Chinese culture. And there they passed the civil administration exams well after studying this book. Every, uh, every executive uh, who had to pass the exams and who had to coordinate the relations between people, he had to know the Book of Changes very well, and he had to pass an exam on it. And so the Book of Changes is uh, the longest book uh, that existed in the, uh, throughout the history of the humanity for the longest time, meaning that people were learning from it, uh, taking its wisdom and implementing it. And uh, there were lots of metaphors in this book. There are lots of uh, why does this book that has so many metaphorical knowledge, so many comparisons there, why is it the best example of management from a Chinese culture? Why was it so often used by Chinese culture to teach people to manage others?
to be leaders. I was thinking about this for a very long time, and I decided to call this Janner with this word, a universal temporal semantic decoder. So it's more or less the way we can put it, universal, temporal, semantic, decoder. And I uh, suggest speaking about the uh, forecasting civilization, predicting civilization. Chinese civilization is like this. This means that it didn't lose this necessity to teach a human being always to try to see the future, to look deeper into the future. Because in Chinese, past and future could be interpreted as the coming and the living. So if you do not have any inner cognitive tools to see deeper, to delve into the world, if you do not have any techniques that help you to look deeper into the future, into the flow of time which overflows onto you constantly, uh, this means that if you don't have such tools, you will never see anything. And then uh, you can only deal with stochastic things, with probabilities and with uh, some uh, strange laws computers, and all these things that we have to deal with because <laughs> only because we don't have any other instruments and any other tools. But when we address the Chinese Book of Changes, I should mention once again that it's a universal temporal semantic decoder which teaches you to work with the world as with the set of temporal semantic fields where you, where you see the whole activity of your mind, of your consciousness, you reduce it to a constant forecasting, constant prediction. You're always trying to help the future, to touch the future. You're always trying to think, where will you go? What will you do? Where will you will spend your holidays? Uh, how the people will treat you. We're always doing this, but we just don't have uh, a certain good technique, certain trustworthy techniques of doing so. And now I'm saying that the modern world, from my point of view, has already achieved the top of its development in a, uh, in a cyber world today, and already starting to form it our, uh, to form it, to reduce our minds through smartphones, through computers, through cyber science. As you understand, cyber uh, science comes from a Greek word derived from a Greek, Greek cyber and now, which means that it's uh, a science about the managing of the mind processes and social processes. I don't see it as something bad, and I see, think that it's a better than some religious technologies than we had before, but I wouldn't say that this uh, cyber management works well. It works badly, as uh, most of the things we have here as a humanity, because people implement it, people use it. And uh, as we, uh, of course, if we don't have these notions about self-development and self-perfection, then of course, what can we manage? So once again, I will say that we have three basic semantic matrices. The first one is the Avranic matrix, the five books, which, which demand to be read by people and to be compared with other texts. The second semantic field is Vida knowledge, Indian knowledge. They also gave birth to various sects and cults. And the third semantic field is the Chinese semantic field, uh, with, which is based on the Chinese Book of Changes. So, though there are so many Chinese people all around here, here in St. Petersburg, uh, trying to capture some, some uh, white knights or some impressions of the Western world, Fedora and Dostoevsky, as Dostoevsky is the best example of this Western concept, Western perception of what 
I don't know uh, why this Chinese people are going to the West, I don't know whether it's good or bad, but it's just as it is. And so this third semantic field, third system, everyone here can uh, ask a question what a Chinese book of changes is and what a Chinese paradigm is. If we ask uh, anyone present here this question, I'm sure that nobody can give me a decent, wholesome answer because uh, this book of changes, this Chinese system does not yet work in the West because uh, we still not cannot grasp its core meaning. You know, in the 70s and 80s, we had this famous book, which uh, one Eastern person wrote, the person from Taiwan, he wrote, oh, this dreadful Chinese, we could also now write such wonderful book, oh, in Russia, and name it, oh, this dreadful Russians, because of course we have here different trends, and now they, in China, China they also have different trends, Trends, not only the book of changes, but still. So we have to separate these things to uh, take the best out of all things. And I believe that the only distant way of uh, human development is uh, for the West to start implementing, consciously implementing uh, the more than accomplishments of science, of Western science, so they could implement and use psycho neurology, quantum science, quantum mechanics uh, to um, to rewriting of these three semantic systems, Abrahamic system, Hinduistic Veda system, which is presented by Vedas, and the Chinese system, the five books of Chinese system, with the main book, the Chinese book of changes. Uh, so, I would like to say that there were no other ways for the development and evolution of planetary consciousness, because nothing comes from nowhere. That is the end. Nothing comes from nowhere. That's just it. No. I can, well, I have 10 minutes more. If someone wants to ask a question, I'll be uh, very glad to respond. So semantic space of uh, Tibetan Buddhism is the Indian culture. No, it's, it's somewhere between Indo Indian culture and Chinese culture. That's somewhere in between. That's the fourth matrix, but it's not semantic. It has a different nature and character. Once again, I would like to say that the modern field is uh, made of uh, signs. It's a semantic field. And so the, uh, the accommodation of knowledge, the development of knowledge, uh, in the modern world is semantic. The fourth system, uh, of course, is also very important, but it's not semantic. This fourth system resides in every uh, one of these three systems, but it's different. So, we have another question. I would like just to say, uh, could you say a few words about non-semantic metrics? Well, just that's uh, uh, yours, uh, my today's speech. No. If I got it right, could we say, could we post a question? What are the perceptions of transformation of consciousness? What are those perspectives? How can we transform our consciousness? So my, uh, my definition of the Book of Changes is a universal semantic uh, temporal decoder. This, this Book of Changes emerged without taking count of time, because in our civilization, we uh, say that time started with the birth of Jesus Christ 
price and we are waiting for the doomsday for the end of times. And that's of course that's impossible when millions, uh, billions of people say that it's now it's 2018. They say the name of the year just because they believe that uh, 2,000 years ago an important event started which has to end. And that's impossible to, well, to speak in these terms about the Book of Changes because the Book of Changes uh, teaches the mind some subtle techniques of coding and decoding, some mindful techniques, decoding and decoding different semantic systems. And I believe that uh, we should start an unprecedented, an unprecedented uh, project of, of interpreting Vida's Book of Changes and Torah and interpret them and translate them into uh, languages in the three books. So uh, we could use ancient Chinese, ancient uh, Hindi and uh, ancient and uh, this ancient languages and interpret this book into one another. So, because now we have uh, a really dreadful translations of these books because when you try uh, to, when you try to understand the original text, that's very hard because the, these are mostly the translations and these translations are awful, they have lots of mistakes. You understand that uh, the interpreter and the translator has uh, uh, a very important role because he uh, makes a huge impact on the translation. So, so as there was uh, an example where could you please remind us that that the, the interpretation of the Ecclesiast book. I would just remind you, I would just remind you that Vanity of Vanities by Ecclesiast is often misinterpreted because the notion of Hubble, which is awful, interpreted as vanity, something that has no value in itself. So Hubble, the lexical, Semantic meaning of this Hubble, this vanity, in reality means breath, vapor, So it means just something uh, evaporating, something but the translation is vanity of vanities, or the, all this translation in the context of uh, the first primary word Hubble, uh, the, the meaning of these words has been changed because they have quite the different meaning, they were very close. Of course, and there was the word, this very favorable, favorite and well-known quote, uh, there was the word, and the word was... The word was... The primary was... Uh, in, the, in the original text, the word was not the God had the word, but what was addressed to God. And it happens so often, uh, this uh, small uh, makements, small mistakes and translations, and of course they change sometimes the meaning, they shift. If you take, for example, the, uh, in, the Indian tradition, the Vita, and you do not try to, uh, to address it with contempt, that is just paganist cults. Because, you know, that's, uh, that's hard, because modern science is... Uh, was, uh, was developing from Christianity, so of course it has its assumptions and misconceptions. So thank you so much. The round table uh, the art as uh, evolutionary practice. And